to all my peeps that have subscribed to my channel. I appreciate it. Hit 25,000 subscribers. Never thought I'd get there the day I first uploaded my first video. But uh, thank you, everyone. And if you can subscribe, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. But today I am working on a 2009 Toyota Camry. We're doing the uh, CV axles, front CV axles on this thing. And I apologize in advance. This is probably one of the worst videos I've done. Um, there's shots that I meant to get. There's B-roll that I meant to get. But uh, it's my buddy's car. And uh, he was in a hurry to get it done. And uh, that's why I forgot some of the stuff. Some of the angles are wrong. Um, so if you're going to leave some hate comments below, um, just uh, please forgive me in advance for not having all the uh, for all for having all the angles but uh, right there I obviously we have the wheel off um, just banging the axle nut um, the axle nut is actually indexed so you can't um, so it doesn't come loose while you're driving on the road so you need to get that index part out you actually see it when you get in there and then uh, you're gonna need a 30 millimeter um, 12 point socket to get in there I actually didn't have one I had a short one but I didn't have a deep socket so I had to run to uh, O'Reilly's to get one and I'll put a picture of the picture of that up right now but um, you can buy my AutoZone O'Reilly's um, right there I'm getting off the um, sway bar link just taking the uh, upper uh, sway bar link bolt out I believe that was a 17 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. So right here I have the 30 millimeter tool on a half inch breaker bar. Uh, my buddy is on the inside holding the brake. So uh, the uh, rotor won't turn. And uh, just get it free and clear. If you have hand tools, it makes it a lot easier. Or uh, air tools, I should say, to get that nut off. Because once you break it off, you got to sit there and spin it. So right there I just showed you a 17 millimeter. That's what you need to uh, get the um, one bolt and two nuts off. The lower control arm, pretty easy to get these off. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Just break them free and clear. And then when you guys go to reinstall it, um, your best bet is to line up the uh, bolt first, and then bring in your um, bring in the nuts. You actually have to separate the knuckle from the um, lower control arm. This job wasn't hard at all, really. Uh, the reason we changed it, it was uh, making a lot of clacking sound when you drove down the road. Now I'm just taking the ax axle nut off all the way. If you have access to air tools, this would be a great place to bring it in, or electric tool, just to zap this thing off. I didn't, um, so I'm just using the half-inch breaker bar and the 30 millimeter deep 12-point socket to get it off. Just tedious. It, you can do it. It's just tedious. You can see me... Uh, Doing it right there, not anything fun and exciting. Okay, so I finally get it off. The reason behind it, I just put it back on is because uh, I'm going to separate the lower control arm and the knuckle here in a second. I didn't want the uh, knuckle flying out for any reason. You can put it back on. You don't have to put it back on. It's not a big deal. So I'm going in there with a breaker, not a breaker bar. Going in there with a pry bar and just separating the two. And then I'll just take my hand and push down on it, and then I have the um, then I have the knuckle separated from the lower control arm. At, at this point, I hadn't taken off the um, the power steering rack connection, the ball joint to that, so I need to go back in there and take that off, or you were not going to get enough room to move the um, knuckle away from the CV CV axle, the new axle, to get that axle out. So right there, I'm showing you. There's a cotter pin. Pulling the cotter pin out. Now I'll get the uh, get the uh, castle nut free and clear. There's my buddy Arnie. He's actually sick that day and puking his guts out. So right there, you can see it was a 17 millimeter. Actually, ac accidentally knocked the camera over. Um, but you can get that free and clear. Um, once you have that nut off once you have the castle nut off uh, you might need to come in there with a hammer hit on the side of the um, knuckle to, to get it to get the two to separate or uh, you can always hit it from the bottom uh, where the castle nut actually goes on to it's right there I'm trying to hit it I'm just not I don't have enough leverage 
so Arnie goes actually inside the vehicle and turns the uh, steering wheel all the, all the way to the left, exposing more of the uh, knuckles so that I can get it free and clear. Or you can do what I'm doing right there and just hit the bottom of the uh, castle, castle nut. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is hit it without the nut on there because you could mushroom the uh, ball joint and then you're not getting it through the knuckles. So just always make sure you protect those threads. And the, and the cool thing is, usually when, when it breaks free and clear, there's a uh, the tone of the metal actually changes pitch. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, so next I crawl underneath the car. The uh, CV axle is free and clear of the, the knuckle. Sometimes you have to put a, or most of the time, I should say 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to need to put a screwdriver or a tiny pry bar between the uh, axle and the transmission and then just kind of um, wedge the axle out. There's a snap ring on the end of the axle that actually keeps it into the transmission that you're fighting against. So that's why you might need some leverage to, to pop the axle out of the transmission. My wife hates it when I wear those boots. <laughs> but I don't care. Okay, so on the axle, there's a actual bearing um, on the middle of the axle. The bolt I just took out actually holds the uh, bearing into the... Uh, um, to the bearing support system, bearing support, which is right there I'm touching. And the bearing, uh, since the axle is so long, the bearing helps uh, keep, the, uh, keep the axle um, from wobbling. So you have a little bolt right there. I think that was a 14 millimeter. And then you have a snap ring. And I just got a pair of crescent, crescent wrench and pulled the, snap ring, put, pulled the snap ring together and the snap ring came out. In A1, A1 Auto's video, um, he struggles with that for quite a while. He actually has to take the uh, bearing support totally off the two bolts on top and pull it out with the uh, axle because the bearing was seized in there. Um, I'll take a look at that video because their video is way better than my video. Okay, so I'm just going to reach up here and I pulled the, uh, I grabbed the um, axle with my right hand near the knuckle, near the wheel, and just pulled it and it came right out. So I'm just guiding it out, everything out through the uh, bearing support. This is obviously on the passenger side. I don't show you the driver's side because the driver's side is exactly the same, actually just a little bit easier. So you can see there's the bearing, there's a snap ring. I'm actually gonna transfer over the snap ring onto the new axle. The new axle comes with a new bearing as well. And one thing I like to do, I'll take the new axle and I'll take the old axle and I'll put them on a bench and uh, compare, the, compare the two, make sure they're the same, um, same length, make sure that they have all the same components. Uh, you don't wanna get in there and uh, find out that you're trying to install the wrong axle into the vehicle. That'll make for a bad, bad day. This will actually cover uh, 2002 to 2009 uh, Toyota Camrys, Toyota Highlanders, and the Toyota Solera as well. And also make note of where the uh, snap ring actually lays or sits on the old one so that you can put it right back on to the new one in the exact same spot. So I just popped it off right there. That's a snap ring to keep the uh, bearing into the bearing support. So my buddy Arnie picked this axle up from, uh, actually both axles, passenger driver's axle, from uh, rockauto.com. They have great pricing, great delivery. That's what we're gonna use on this Toyota Camry. Putting the uh, bolt back into the bearing support to hold the bearing in place. And then I put the snap ring back in so yeah, the passenger side is a little bit harder than the driver side. Driver side is the driver side axle is tiny. It's like six inches long. So right here, I sped everything up, bringing the uh, knuckle in place, bringing the uh, put the axle back into the knuckle, um, lining up the uh, knuckle and the lower control arm, put the axle nut on, then I'll put on the um, oh what do you call it sway bar link. And then the uh, power steering rack, ball joint, castle nut, cotter pin. Make sure that, make sure everything's tight because you don't want anything loose in here when you're driving down the road. And then I just take the uh, axle and just tighten it up as hard as I can. There's probably a torque spec on there, but I just tighten it down until I can't tighten it anymore. And then um, just have your buddy hold that. Or if you can, if you don't have somebody helping you, you can always put the wheel back on pop the center um, center out of the <clears throat> of the wheel and uh, the whole wheel once you have it down on the ground the wheel will actually hold the uh, the wheel will actually hold the um, 
rotor from turning, the axle from turning, and then you can uh, tighten everything up. And there I go, I'm just indexing the, uh, the axle nut so that it won't move. It's not hard, it took maybe an hour to do this job. I apologize for the uh, piss poor angles and not getting every single uh, detail in there. But uh, check out A1 Auto's video down in the description below. And uh, if you guys can, please subscribe.